Alright guys, time for a new episode review of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Heroes in a Half Shell, Turtle Power. And yeah, this, uh, oh man, um, twice in one day, Nickelodeon. Not only do you have time skips, but also great, episode, great episodes for those said time skip stories. So pretty much this episode is all about uh, them picking up the pieces from the Krang invasion. Yeah, the Krang and the Foot Clan have pretty much taken over New York. They've made it Alien HQ. And meanwhile, uh, the Turtles, Casey and April, have come to Northampton and living in April's farmhouse. This episode feels so much like the first movie with a few obvious exceptions. This was so cool. We see that, uh, you know, Leo is in a coma. He's been in a coma for three months. Remember, three months. It's not, it's not, it's like in Legend of Korra, three years. I mean... Wow, I did not expect them to do a three-month uh, time skip. But in that time period, uh, Raph, uh, Raph has been watching over uh, Leo, kind of like in the in the original movie, it was Leo watching over Raph. We also have Donnie uh, uh, working in his lab, and also Mikey on the on the farm, whereas April uh, writes down everything in her journal. It is so much like the first movie, and I can't help but be like, yeah, that is so awesome. So, pretty much, uh, they're all trying to adjust. Also, there's this... Gr there's also, a n as always in the previous two seasons, there's a new show that the Turtles are watching. Is it, uh, and it is a complete and total parody of uh, Thundar the Barbarian. The moment I saw it, I'm like, <gasps> Thundar! <laughs> it's kind of like in the previous season, we had one that was like Voltron, and the other one, and the one before that, it's like, obviously, Star Trek. I gotta give a lot of credit to the writers of this show. They know how to do. Uh, they know how to do some good parody stuff. So anyway, while this is all going on, uh, Leo finally wakes up, and yeah, we actually and yeah, we actually get a <laughs> get this. We actually get a real reason why he sounds different, and. Uh, I'll get to what I think of Seth Green as Leonardo in a second, but yeah, they give an honest to god explanation of uh, of uh, Leo's the reason why Leo sounds different, and yeah, get this, Leo Leo took so much damage to his body that uh, his his thor his uh, throat was damaged, and now that's why he sounds different. It's done permanent damage. Uh, the, he was beaten so badly that it di it did permanent damage to his throat. And that's why he sounds like Seth Green now. That's why he sounds differently. I thought that, I didn't even believe I I uh I was just thinking oh they'll just uh you know not even acknowledge that and keep going. But no, they give an honest explanation of why he's get why he sounds different. That's really cool. Kudos to the writers there. Also uh to Lydia uh Lydia also to Lydia uh, Cerebros. uh by the way, Lydia, you were right. You made a joke saying that Leo got beaten so badly that his voice changed from Jason Biggs to Seth Green. Yeah, you weren't too far off. In fact, you hit the nail on the head, so good on you, Lydia. Um, but yeah, this was really cool. So uh, Leo is still hurt. He's still banged up. And Donnie is giving him uh, basically medicine that's mutagen, and it's helping him heal. And Leo obviously doesn't like it. So pretty much, Leo wants to get back on his feet soon enough, and but that medicine he's been taking, that mutagen medicine he's been taking, is it ain't doing too well to his body. So he vomits, and the vomit literally turn infects the ground and makes a new creature called the Creep, who is pretty much a... <laughs> he is a literal... Uh, he is a literal combination of Jason Voorhees and Swamp Thing. He's pretty much if Swamp Thing, if Jason Voorhees was taken over by the Green, and that's what you get right there. Um, but yeah, uh, let's talk about Seth Green. Since yeah, let's talk about Seth Green as Leonardo. I think he's really good. I think he's pretty good. He's not taking that. He's not making himself sound like Chris Griffin or anything. He's actually taking himself seriously, uh, taking this role seriously, and he actually gives a very cool kind of. Uh, open, you know, open-minded kind of voice. I know that sounds weird, but he sounds like, yeah, he sounds pretty good for the role. I thought he was really good. Um, so yeah, I'm actually really, I'm really happy to see Seth Green voice uh, Leonardo from here on out, hopefully. 
but yeah. So the story continues, and uh, all the power goes out in in the built in the house, and Raph and Raph goes out to get firewood. Well, he doesn't come back because the thing uh, captures him. So April and Casey go out one way, while Donnie and and Mikey go another go out searching on the other side, while Leo stays home because he knows he's too badly damaged, and he's trying his best to heal up. He's trying his best to keep going, and he is. Man, he is so banged up. He is so badly damaged. But yeah, he it uh, it's it was really cool. Like uh, I also, if you're a fan of the of uh, the Friday the Thirteenth franchise, you're going to freaking love this uh, this episode. You're gonna freaking love this episode. I swear. It was so cool to see all the references. Like uh, when when Mikey and Donnie go into the little uh, shack. And find Leo and find Leo's uh, medicine on a table with candles around it. It's so much like with uh, with uh, Jason keeping his mother's head as like a little tro as a little on a little pedestal on a little little altar. It's kind of like that. We also have him wearing a sack on his head, like in the first, like in the second movie, and carrying around a pitchfork. Remember, in the second movie, Jason didn't use a pitchfork. It, uh, I mean, didn't use a machete till the third movie and then on. In the first movie, it was more of a pitchfork, and he had the sa the uh, burlap sack on his head. So, and then they finally use Kate, uh, Casey's mask, and he uses it as his, as uh, the hockey mask. And also, he get he get he manages to get uh, Leo's sword, one of them at least, and uses it like the machete. So, I I really dug that. It was, and also another cool feature is that they actually had the music from. Uh, the sound effects and some of the music, the the original music from Friday the Thirteenth, the whole, ch -ch -ch <laughs> and also some of the uh, fast paced music from the original movies. So kudos to you guys for making a very cool, uh, a, a, a very cool tribute to uh, to uh, <laughs> to Friday the Thirteenth. Kudos to you guys. Uh, so yeah, Leo, while still training, discovers April, who gets dragged back into the forest, and Ape and. Uh, and Leonardo pretty much is like, well, it's time to nut up or shut up. Meanwhile, we also discover what happened to Raph. Raph has been uh, pretty much converted into a plant-like creature who then gets literally absorbed into the creep. He gets ta His mutagen gets taken away, and yeah, he gets literally absorbed in this creature and turned into a plant. That is terrifying. That is freaking terrifying. And yeah, you get this, uh, you almost get like, oh my god, they just killed Raph right on screen. But then Leo comes in, still banged up, and yeah, they have a really cool fight. Leo manages to rescue the others, and together they manage to defeat the uh, uh, the creep, as uh, Mikey calls him. And yeah, they ma they manage to defeat the creep, and but uh, they also manage to rescue Raphael by converting all the uh, uh, mutagen from the creep and into Raphael's body. So they managed to fix him. Very deus ex machina, mind you, but I'm okay with that. I am pretty okay with that kind of ending. All in all, absolutely loved this first episode. It's very... It, it's... Man, Nickelodeon, not only do you have the whole time skip, th uh, time skip thing in this episode like you did in Korra, but also you had a great opener for an episode uh, uh, like you did with Korra. So, twice in one day. Good on you guys. Uh, I... <laughs> I applaud you. I applaud you, Nickelodeon. But yeah, I am so excited for this new season. We're going to get so many uh, things in here. We're going to get Robert Anglin as a villain alongside John Kassir, the uh, the voice of the Crypt Keeper in Deadpool from Marvel Ultimate Alliance. We're going to get... Uh, we're apparently getting Bebop and Rocksteady. Yeah, from what I understand, yeah, we're getting Bebop and Rocksteady and possibly Toka. We're also getting Mo uh, Mondo Gecko. We are getting so much in this season, guys. We are getting so many characters in this season. It's not even funny. Um, I am super excited. I, I really do like Seth Green as uh, Leonardo. I really dig him as Leonardo. I think he's a really good... Uh, I think he's done a really good colder... Not really colder, but he sounds like... Um, he sounds like he's very happy. Well, the more I think about it, I know he, I said earlier he sounds a little optimistic, but more way, more ways he sounds more like he's uh, a little more haggard and a little more battle uh, battle worn. That's how I really see uh, Seth Green's performance of Leonardo now is vo voice wise anyway. But anyway, 
I really love this. So you guys tell me, what did you guys think of the opener for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Season 3? Did you guys like it? Did you guys hate it? Comment below, let me know. Um, I'm really interested to see what you guys think of all this. And yeah, once again, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I am out.